I want to get more into like your coaching career because you've had quite the fucking come up. We were talking about a little bit on the bus and you're, you know, you're very, uh, you have a very like stoic approach about, you know, it's all, you know, playing, meeting the right people, taking advantage of the right opportunity, like relating it all to life. But like looking at your background, like I didn't know you played for the Omaha beef. Number one. You didn't know I, no, dude, bro. I was right there, man. No, you play for the Omaha beef. Like you played in the indoor fucking football league. And then you go into the coaching. NIFL, the NIFL, bro. And then you go in like, I think about a guy that's playing in the indoor football league. And it's not like I'm not being, I'm trying my best not to be disre- sounding disrespectful. No, you can be I'm disrespectful. Not being disrespectful. It's okay. But like, <laughs> you know, like you sit there and you think of a guy in the NIFL the indoor football league who goes into division two coaching and then, you know, through probably a connection there. And then from there you start climbing the ranks of your coaching journey. You get a little higher. Then you go to Houston. That's where it seemed like you meet uh, coach Stan, coach Shanahan. You go to Washington. You, then you go to Notre Dame for a year. Then you get back into it with Atlanta. Then you go to LA then the Titans. Yeah. Now you're here. There was a lot of moves. Bro, a lot of moves. Although my wife, my wife always tells me, she's like, you don't move. You relate, you relocate. I move. Dog. So that's gotta be tough on the family, number it one. Is, it is tough. It is tough. But our kids were young enough where it, it didn't really affect them. Yeah. Um, and they got to, you know, live in a lot of cool different cities and meet a lot of new people. Yeah. And, but no, it's um, that that's life, right? Is just being presented with an opportunity. So going back, my dad was a college coach at Central. Yeah, Michigan. reflect a little bit on your coaching journey because I want to talk about some of the pivotal moments that probably took place as you continue this to elevate. bore everybody. But um, so my dad was at Central Michigan for a lot of years. He gets fired my senior year of, of high school, so I was going to walk on there. Um, ended I up, can. yeah, yeah, he got fat. Yeah. Hey. There's two kinds of coaches, coaches who've been fired and coaches who are going to get fired, typically. That's a typically. bar, yes. So, but he was at Central Michigan. Um, anyways, to make a long story short, I went to Western Michigan, transferred to Saginaw Valley, uh, played against Brian. Oh, oh shit. The man is here. We got Coach Versace. He's going to join us. And he will listen to this story with us. You thought you'd never fucking see me again, did you? <laughs> I was hoping I would never have you. Hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, One, two, three, four. I'm Rich. Oh, that's, hey. How you doing, man? Yeah, what's yeah, up? What's up? up? It's me. Yeah, no. Okay. We do, but we got the background. We're good. We've been waiting. Welcome cool. to my meeting. No, no, don't worry about it. I didn't know what I was supposed to wear. Here, I'll take it off. Hotter than fuck anyways. They've heard a lot about you. Garrett, Jack, JP. We're just in the middle. He's reflecting on his uh, come up in the coaching ranks, and he's talking about his dad a little bit right now. But I was talking about how he was an indoor football player yeah, like the, the with the, with the Omaha thing. Beef. You what? <laughs> <laughs> that probably makes Coach Massage. Uh, he doesn't. I got He's, plenty of film on Will missing blocks on pump. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't put that out. Sure. Yeah, you got to get this thing right. Like, I know you love your coffee, but come on now, the details. Look like you quit lifting. Come on. Ooh. You know this uh, looked in December. We're just talking about how I'm coming back in December maybe at he, some point. He says he stays ready, so he, he don't have to get ready. You're using my shit. <laughs> oh, I love that. You faced, you faced uh, me last year. Hey, can you cover a punt? We were covering punts the next week. Cool. Um, but, yeah, so your dad gets fired. Yeah. You're going to walk on there. Yeah, go to Western Michigan, transfer to Saginaw Valley. In the meantime, Brian Kelly was the head coach of Grand Valley. He gets the central job after I graduate, and I go – Central Michigan as a grad assistant, and that's where I met Robert Sala. No shit. So you're connected to fucking Sala. So we were roommates. We got there's a lot of good stories that are probably not appropriate. What's your best for, story? Give us a good oh, story. No, give no, us no, 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 no. You're gonna get me divorced, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to cut that out. I'm just kidding. I know, right? <laughs> that might have been. Yeah, I'm just I know. That's why I'm like, hey, I'm that kidding. That was a joke, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a bad joke. 
It was a bad attempt at humor. But um, um, no, I think it was a great attempt. I'm just looking out for your best interest yeah. outside of this bus. Yeah. Um, no, so yeah, Sal and I roomed together for a year and uh, he, he went on and went to Georgia, then got an opportunity with the Texans and they had a QC position open a couple years later and and he was kind of pounding the table for me with with Kyle Shanahan with with Gary Kubiak and it's rare that a QC gets another QC a job because usually it's coordinator they're not in the position to yeah make and a um I had met those guys a couple of times went down to the combine one year went to when they were when they were playing the Browns I was coaching at Ashland University went up and hung out with them for a night and got got to meet those guys so they could at least put a face with a name and sure enough, I'll never forget Gary Kubiak calls and he said, um, you know, we have an opportunity here. Would, do you want to come? I said, shoot, coach, I'll, I'll get in my car tomorrow. I'll be there. And so I drove down to Houston from Ohio and, you know, was there for two years and got to meet some great people. And um, obviously Gary Kubiak is a guy that I got a ton of respect for. And um, Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator. And here it is. Kyle's 28 years old. I'm 28 years old. And I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy can't know that much more than I do. And I was blown away. I was like, holy shit. It was next level. Oh, it was, I was like, man, I don't know anything about football. So um, it was a two-year crash course on on just learning football at, at this level. It's like, like I tell people, it's like getting your PhD in football. And especially when you're learning from really great coaches and good people and, you know, Coobs, Kyle. Mike McDaniel was there as a quality control. Sala was a quality control on the defensive side. So, I mean, we had a we had a pretty special crew. Yeah, I mean that coaching trees there. You guys are head coaches pretty much everywhere right now. <laughs> but I know you're gonna fucking hate talking about yourself, but I'm gonna do my best to try to make you do it. When a QC is banging the table for you to get a job, and you end up getting the job after you do the meeting and name to a face, like, what do you think that you I want to say, what do you think that you had? What do you feel like you believed in that, like, that, like, put you in a spot that you were, like, you executed at all times? Like, what do you think made you different enough to get a job like that? Like, what are, what's the shit that you got that put you in a Great position question, like Will. that? I just think it, it goes back to, you know, there's no substitute for hard work. And you got to be willing to put in the work and try to be as detailed as possible. And I just remember there were a lot of sleepless nights I had. We had Alex Gibbs was our um, offensive line coach and I'm doing the run drawings. And my whole goal on Tuesday nights was to get done with the run drawings so I could go get maybe an hour or two hours of sleep. And Alex was an early riser. He'd get in there maybe before 4 a.m. Yeah. And I'll never forget a couple of times. I'm like just finishing up the last drawing and sure as shit, I hear the door slam and in comes Coach Gibbs. and. Uh, I knew uh, there was no sleep in that night. You just stay up. You work all nighters. And then he sees you there, and clearly, yeah. like that's a feather in the cap. Of this well, that's not a works. feather in the cap. It's like, what the hell's taking you so damn long? <laughs> so you just, you know, but you, 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 you do whatever it takes to get the job done. Right, 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 right. Now, going through when you were in Houston, Washington, like you've gotten the opportunity to coach with a lot of great minds. Like, what are things that you feel like you've adopted in your own to put in your own game through, like? learning with McVay, Shanahan, Vrabel, all those guys along the way. Yeah, there's, there's, there's something that you learn from every situation. What's what, something that really stands out? So that way, maybe you're not trying to think of too many things. Like, well, no, really I, I think first and foremost, just being around all these guys is you got to be true to yourself and, and don't try to be somebody else. Because, um, you know, as a player, you see right through that. And that's, that's not endearing to people. Uh, nobody wants to be around that. So I think it starts with being that. Uh, and then you know, being with Dan Quinn was, was a, a great lesson for me. And just in terms of how much fun we can have at work and still get everything done that we need to get done. Yeah. And just in terms of the, the environment, the culture, it kind of changed my uh, view of, of just coming to work every day. 